Hey, Divi Nation, thanks for dropping by our documentation to learn all about Divi rows and Divi row options. So our rows are one of the three most important components of every Divi layout. There are sections, rows, and modules. Um, rows live inside of sections, modules live inside rows, and within each of those, there are just a plethora of options you have for customization. And in this particular video, we're gonna dive deep into what you can do with Divi's rows. Stay tuned. In this video, I'm going to go over Divi's rows and row options. When you're building a website using the Divi Builder, you work with three main building blocks, sections, rows, and modules. The largest of these are your sections that function like large containers, and they hold everything together that makes up your page or a section of your page. These sections are made up of rows, which provide the column structure of your web page. The row settings can be used to greatly increase the variety of layouts built with the Divi Builder, since they do create the structure that holds your modules. And the modules are the smallest yet most powerful of the building blocks. In this tutorial, I'm going to concentrate on these rows and I'm going to show you just a few of the many possibilities available when using them. To do this, I'm going to be using the Visual Builder. And as you can see, uh, this page right here already has some sections and rows and modules. When I hover over a section, it's blue, and when I hover over a row, it's green. And when I hover over a module, it shows up this gray menu here. So uh, we are going to be concentrating on the rows. And here you can already tell that each row has a unique column structure and width. This one has a two column structure. To find out what the column structure is or to change your column structure, just click on this change column structure link right here in the row menu. As you can see, I can already see that it is a two column structure, but I could go ahead and change it to anything that I want. Once you change it though, you may have to go ahead and drag your modules uh, to their correct place. So any combination of these will give you the power to create unique layouts in just a click of a button. Now, I don't want these changes, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on right click and I'm going to click undo. And let's go ahead and continue on. Adding a row to your section is quite simple. The only thing you need to do is hover over your add new row icon here and select it. Click on the layout that you want, of course, and then automatically your columns will appear and it will prompt you to enter in your first module. I'm not gonna enter a, a new module here. Just to show you, I'm just going to use my short key here and click uh, Command C or Control C to copy it. And I'm just going to paste it in here with Control or Command V. And so now you can see how easy it is to add a four column row structure within your layout here. Let's go ahead and delete that one. Let's go over some of our row module settings. Here, if I click on my row settings here, you can see that under the content tab, I have this background option. The background options here are a bit unique to the row because not only can I add a background to my entire row, which I'll show you here. If I give this, let's say a blue background, you can see that it has been uh, added to the background of the entire row area here. I could also add it to any of my columns. So as you can see here, this is the column one background. I can add it to just this one if I wanted to. I could go to my second column here and add a different color. and do the same for my third column. 
So you can see that in just a few clicks, I can give my each of my columns its own custom color or image or whatever it is you need. Looking at it here, I can see that I will need some padding here, which is easily done in the design tab. Let's go ahead and go to our design tab here. Under my design tab, I have the option of aligning my row. By default, it will be centered, but I could change it to left aligned if I wanted to, or right aligned. This is a great way if you wanted to, you know, alternate and stack your content from left to right. The sizing options here are really powerful in that this first one allows you to make this entire row full width by a click of a button. So you're not limited to having, you know, one width for your entire page. You could alternate it. I could also make this row a custom width. If I really wanted to nail down a specific width for my layout, I could do that here. And I can set my units to either pixel or percentage. Say I wanted to make this one, you know, 741 pixels. I could do that. I could set it to a percentage and do it that way so that it responds uh, a little differently, maybe smoother on your uh, different devices. I could also uh, use a custom gutter width. Gutter width really refers to your distance between your columns here, or I can say your margin between your columns. You can create a custom gutter width by adjusting this option here. The gutter width ranges from one to four, four being the greatest distance between each column. And then you can come down to two, which is even a lesser margin. And then one is zero margin between the columns. This comes in really useful whenever you're trying to create a full width grid layout for your web page. So if I keep my gutter width at one and then come back up here and then make this row full width, you can see that that is an easy way to create a full width grid layout for your web page. The spacing elements allow you to, you know, create custom margins and padding, not only for your entire row as a whole, but also for each of your columns within your row. So right now I have a, you know, a custom padding of 80 pixels here to give me some separation. Let's see what happens when I add some, you know, custom padding to each of my columns here. And I would want to do the same for all of my columns so that they're even. The border options here are a great way to add custom corners or border styles and widths to your row. This will be applied to your entire row, so bear that in mind. If you can see that when I give my border width or increase my border width here, you can see that the width is applied to the entire row module, thus exposing my padding that I have uh, for my row here. So I can go back up here. And let's go ahead and take out my padding. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and, you know, take out my padding altogether so that my border now fits flush with my modules here or my columns. The box shadow can be applied to your row here. Probably not best used if it's a, you know, a full width row. So let's go back and go to my sizing here. Let's check this one uh, to no. And so you can see kind of the box shadow take effect there. 
as you can see, I'm doing a lot of design changes and this is just using the row settings. I haven't even touched my modules here. I could give an animation to my row as well. And of course, in our advanced tab, we have our options to add unique CSS IDs and classes to target this module um, from an external style sheet. And I can target the module as a whole, and I can also target just an individual column as well, which is pretty convenient. I could also add some custom CSS to any element of this module by entering it in these boxes here. That way I don't have to use an external style sheet if I don't want to. And of course, I could disable the visibility on phone, tablet, or desktop. Now let's go ahead and make a few more changes to our layout here just to clean it up a bit. Here I have a two column row. Let's go ahead and jump into my settings here and see what we have. In my background, you can see that I have a, uh, an image for my, my one column, my first column background here. And in the second column, I have this gray color here. But I want this to go full width. So I'm gonna go to my design tab going to go down to my sizing. I'm going to click to make this full width. All right, so I still see some spacing here and I want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to my custom gutter width here. I'm going to bring it down to one. As you can see, that looks so much better and it's easily done with the settings that we have. You can always click this option to equalize column heights so that the columns, both of these on the right and the left, will maintain the same height when adjusting on certain browsers. Let's go ahead and save this out. Let's come down a little bit farther here. I'm going to go ahead and go to the row settings here. Go to my design tab. Go to my sizing. And let's go ahead and make this a custom width. And let's make it a percentage. Let's make it 81%. And so there you go. That looks a whole lot better. And that concludes our overview of Divi rows and row options.